What's up, I'm architect Drew Paul Bell, and in this video, what I wanna talk about is the process of becoming a licensed architect. Your license is actually administered by your state, meaning that's gonna happen in whatever jurisdiction you live in. So, like, I, I, I live in Georgia, I got my initial license here in Georgia. Once you get your initial license in a particular state, it's not that hard to get your license in other states. Um, a lot of people do it all the time. My, my boss, for example, has his license here in Georgia. He has his primary license in North Carolina. He's also licensed in Tennessee, South Carolina, Florida. He's all, kind of all over the Southeast. Once you have your initial license, it's typically just some paperwork and paying some fees. Now, it depends on where you're going. If you're going to Florida, they require that you know more about wind loads of like hurricane level wind loads. Over in California, you have to know more about seismic activity. And, and there are other states that similarly require you to have more information. So there may be extra requirements that you have to do depending on particular states, but if you follow NCARB's basic structure, then you're not gonna have any problem getting your, your license in other states as well. What is the structure though? So we got three E's. It is education, experience, and examination. These are the three things that are basically build up what it takes to get your license. So the most commonly spoken about one is actually the exam, but what has to come before the exam has gotta be very first your your education, meaning what kind of a degree are you getting. You have to get a degree in architecture, and that degree in architecture also has to be a NAB accredited degree. NAB it stands for the National Architectural Accrediting Board. They determine which architecture programs are gonna be accredited and which ones are not. Typically that means that you're gonna be taking a five-year bachelor's degree, a B-Arch. If you're not taking a five-year degree, you're not getting an accredited bachelor's degree. If you get a four-year bachelor's degree, which is not accredited, then you have to go get a two-year master's degree, which is accredited. So the accredited degree is then the master's degree. So they call this sometimes a, a, the five-year program or a four plus two, meaning you can get an undergrad in something. It can be architecture, it could also be something else. I had, we had an intern who her undergrad was in, um, it was either marketing or it was business administration. And then she went to go get a master's in architecture. After the education requirements, then what you need to do is set up an NCARB record. Once you establish the NCARB record, which again takes some fees, then you're gonna be able to start logging in your, your development hours. They're gonna verify your degree and you're, you're gonna start logging in your hours. And so it, this program is now called the AXP, the Architect Experience Program. It used to be called the IDP, the Intern Development Program. And of course, old habits die hard, so probably you're gonna hear people talking about IDP. That's what they're talking about. It's actually the same thing, just repackaged. It used to be that you had to get um, several, several hours in several different categories that, that were very finely defined, um, but now, it's more like six broad categories instead of like a bunch of finer points. And so you you have to get a total of 3,740 hours. It's across six different categories and these six different categories are actually the same six categories that the exams are. You can take the exams at the same time that you're getting your experience. It's called concurrence. And again, this is new. It used to be you had to finish your IDP hours before you could stay, start taking the ARE. Now you can actually take the ARE while you're doing your intern development, your architect experience program hours. And so with the ARE, there are six different exams. And again, it's the same categories as the experience program. And those categories are practice management, project management, programming and analysis, project planning and design, project development and documentation, and construction and evaluation. Becoming a licensed architect is similar to becoming like a licensed doctor or lawyer. Um, it's, it's a protected term and not just anybody can call themselves an architect. Lawyers take the bar. Um, the ARE is unlike the bar in that the bar is only one exam. Well, it lasts a couple of days, but it's only like one test. And it's only offered twice a year. The ARE, however, is actually offered whenever you can find a time slot available for it. And there's not one exam, there's six. When are they available? basically any time, there is a company that's called Prometric, and it's their job, they're, what their company does is they administer exams. So if you want to take an ARE, you go onto your NCARB record, you pay, your, you pay the fees to register for the exam, then they send you to Prometric, and Prometric's website, they'll have time slots and time slots available for you to come in and reserve a seat to come in and take that exam. And that might be, they might have a spot open tomorrow, they might have a spot open in two weeks, um, you'll be able to look at a calendar and kind of pick different time slots. 
and you can choose if you want to take it at like 8 a.m. or you want to take it at noon. There's going to be a little bit of options on there, but again, you, this is a company that administers exams. So they're not only administering architecture exams, they're also administering exams to people who want to be like personal trainers and accountants and actuaries and all that stuff. So there's other people filling up the slots. It's not like they have an infinite number of seats available, but you just go in there and you pick a time. And it's basically whenever. So it's unlike the SAT, which you're probably familiar with, or the bar. One challenge with that is that you have to have the self-motivation to schedule your exams and go take those on your own. It's not like it's a deadline that's coming up and you have to take action on it. Um, there's actually a lot of, there, there's a challenge with the, with the ARE, which is having the motivation to say, I'm going to take it now and I'm going to sign up. So a lot of times signing up is actually the best idea because that puts it on the calendar a month or two out is what I would say you should aim for. Um, schedule it a month or two out and then you have that hard deadline, you have to study and you have to do what you can to pass. There are six exams, so you have to pass all the six exams within a five-year rolling clock. That means that from when you pass your first exam, you have to pass your last exam within the next five years. If you pass that, that last exam, let's say six years later, that first exam expires. Sometimes what happens is there's this problem where you know people start taking their exams and then they take too long to finish up the exams and then the earlier exams expire. This happened to a coworker of mine. He started testing and then the recession hit and he had only like two exams left I think and he kind of fell off the horse and wasn't disciplined during the recession and wasn't taking any more exams. He started taking it again once things kind of picked back up but by that point um, I think he, he actually failed a test and then when that happened he couldn't retake the next test until uh, six months later. It used to be six months waiting period and then that first test he took expired so then he had to retake the one he had failed and then retake the very first one before he lost any more exams. So there's the five-year rolling clock limitation and then, and then there is also the limitation behind uh, failing an exam. So if you fail an exam then you have to wait 60 days before you can retake it. Like I said it used to be six months so 60 days, two months is way better. And um, there's that and then there's also the re restriction that you can only take an exam um, three times within one rolling year clock. Once you pass your exams, then what? All right, that's that's the beast of the problem, right? You've, you've, you've completed your education, you completed your experience hours, and you completed your exams. What are the next steps? Nobody talks about this. Well, the next steps are you actually need to call your state board because chances are there's still something more you have to do. There's always another form to fill out, another application fee to pay. They're not just going to give you a license without making you pay fifty dollars for it or something like that, right? So. You have to call up, call up your state board and then ask them what comes next. Ask them what you need to do. It's probably going to be filling out a form um, and then ask them if they've received the, your information from NCAR. I finished my exams and then it was actually a week or two later that I actually finished up my AXP hours. I finished them right at about the same time. I had it timed perfect. As soon as I finished my IDP hours, my AXP hours, I had a letter, a, an email from NCAR saying that the next step was going to be they were going to send the stuff to the state board and that the state board, that, that they would let me know. And then a few weeks went by and nobody said anything. So I called up NCARB and I said, hey, you guys said that you sent this thing, how's it going? And they said, oh, we haven't sent that yet. <laughs> so even though they said that they sent it, they hadn't sent it. But of course, if you've made it this far within this whole process, I know that you've applied for some building permits. I know that you've dealt with like the bureaucracy and you know that paperwork moves at the speed of staff. So you know how to follow up on things. So after you finish your exams, you gotta still follow up on stuff. You gotta follow up with NCARB, you gotta make sure that they actually send the stuff to, to the state board, and then you gotta follow up with the state board to make sure that they actually um, go through and process it. If you call them up and they say, well, we said seven to 10 days and we're still within that time frame, so call us back in a few days, follow up on that stuff. Put it on your calendar, figure out what they're, they'll say how long they have to get it back to you. Put that on your calendar and call them back on that day to make sure that they get it. And I'm super cynical about uh, bureaucracies and paperwork and this kind of thing, but um, I got my license and my stamp reasonably quickly. And I hear horror stories online about people waiting months to get their license after they've finished all the requirements. So call your state board, figure out what else is needed. And, and then, uh, like I said earlier, if you're in states like California, California has an additional exam that you still have to take. And so there may be other requirements you have to satisfy in that regard. But again, contacting your state licensing board is going to be um, is going to be the step to take and that's usually I would assume that's always in this um, the Secretary of State's office. Okay, so that is it. Easy peasy, right? 
Uh, we can explain now all these different things. It obviously takes a long time, and you should do plenty of research on this. I had to pick up my information from multiple websites. I highly recommend that you check out um, ncarb.org. They have a map that's like an interactive map, and you click on different states and see what the requirements are, what the broad requirements are. Now, NCARB's website is not 100% accurate. What you need to do ultimately is go look at your Secretary of State's website and see what your state actually requires because they're gonna, they are the ones that determine whether or not you get your, your license or not. And so they're the ones that are gonna have the requirements. Something might have, there might have been some error in communicating with NCARB. So don't trust their website, trust the state board. Those are the ones who count. So I hope that this video gave you a good outline for the process of getting your architecture, your architect's license here in the US. Um, I hope that this video helped. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to leave me some comments down below. And um, I hope this helps and I'll talk to you next time.